So with that said, I'll let Buddy go into a uh, little more detail. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening behind all of this, um, or specifically um, the, the theme throughout here is going to be that um, this Connor had a certain set of launch angles at certain velocities, and he shifted those up and to the right, uh, higher, higher velocities, higher launch angles. Why is that important? Uh, some of it's pretty obvious. Uh, as Dan said, hit the ball harder, good things happen. So increasing ball exit speed makes perfect sense, right? But what's going on with the launch angle? So uh, Alan Nathan, who we work pretty closely with, he's one of our advisors, and, and most of us know him pretty well for all of the work he's done in, in baseball physics. Uh, he did a series of papers uh, in the past year or so uh, analyzing data that's available in the major leagues from StatCast uh, to look at uh, outcomes and the probability of certain uh, base hits, home runs, certain uh, events, depending on how you hit the ball. So here's an example that shows uh, balls hit. Uh, this is home run probability for major league players. Balls hit between... 20 and up to 40, 45, mile, uh, 45 degrees of launch angle at a high enough velocity are guaranteed to be a home run. Um, that's just the physics of the problem. So the red area in this plot between those two sets of launch angles and high velocities upwards of 100 miles an hour uh, will result in a home run. So for power hitters especially, that's where they want to hit the ball. Uh, it actually works well for non-power hitters. These balls in the gap... Um, extra base hits uh, also want to have these launch angles. So let's look at launch angles a little bit more carefully. So what I'm showing here is a curve of the distance the ball will travel for a whole range of launch angles, all the way from negative angles where the ball goes down uh, to very positive angles where it's going up. So each data point is at 80 miles an hour. We just pick the number. Um, and the curve will vary a little bit depending on the aerodynamics, and I'm not going to get into uh, ball spin and, and the um, conditions of the atmosphere and all that, but roughly this is, this is how it works. And if you increase the angle at which the ball is launched into the air, uh, the distance increases up to a point, and that's about 40, 45 degrees. And then, of course, if you go above that, you get a pop-up, and the, and the distance comes back down. Uh, and that maximum occurs at just about any speed of launch angle. So... If we take a particular case, uh, to explain this a little more clearly, uh, let's just say I hit the ball at, at zero degrees. A lot of people would say, that's a great, great hit. That's a goal. Hit it straight off the bat, right back, uh, zero degrees, level to the ground, right? Um, the ball's going to travel. Uh, the bottom plot here shows the actual flight of the ball. So all these dashed lines are going to be ball flight. Um, doesn't get off the ground very much. It only started two feet off the ground in this example, and it only travels about 30 feet before it hits the ground. That's a ground ball. So let's elevate the ball a little bit. Now we're going to hit it at 10 degrees, uh, and a lot of us in the cage would think that's, that's pretty good elevation. Um, that seems to be a pretty good goal. Well, in this plot, 10 degrees does get the ball farther out, but put it in perspective, it goes about 130 feet or so, there's where second base is on the infield. So this, this ball hit the ground roughly right back of second base, about where the shortstop and second baseman play on an arc, right? So another ground ball, another fairly easily fielded ball. If we go all, all the way up to 30 degrees, now we can have the possibility of an extra base hit. Ball's over the infield. In this case, mostly uh, short of the outfielders. Uh, this ball is can be an effective hit, and it's actually not hit that hard. And then if we go all the way to the other side, at 60 degrees, uh, we're beyond the maximum. Uh, that's a pop-up. Obviously, that's really not what we want, but I'm just showing the full series of, of angles here. That's launch angle. But as Dan said, we really need two components to be effective. Uh, we can't just have speed. We've got to have speed at the right angle, and we can't just have angle. We have to have angle at the right speed. Right? So let's look at speed for a second. Speed, again, is pretty self-explanatory. As speed increases on, on the ball, it goes farther. Right? No big surprise there, and it's a, it's a linear relationship. So if we look at a, a case, now we're kind of uh, flipping it around here. We're picking a specific launch angle. All these are 10 degrees. We'll start at 60 miles an hour. That's what the trajectory looks like. Um, never gets 
uh, doesn't get out of the infield, never gets very high. Hit it a little faster, we'll hit it at 80 miles an hour at the same angle. This is the ball we saw a while ago that landed just back at second base. So not very effective hit. Even if we go all the way to 100 miles an hour at 10 degree launch angle still, the ball gets out in the, into the outfield. No one's going to argue that's most likely a base hit all day long, right? But we've kind of wasted that 100 mile an hour exit speed. Uh, that ball was crushed, right? Um, that's, that's probably a single. You hit it to an outfielder. It's one hopper to the left fielder. Uh, he wasted 100 miles an hour and got a single out of it. Now, base hit's a base hit, but we could have done more with it. So anyway, this is 10, 10 degree damage. launch angle. Damage. He did damage. Is a damage. single damage? Damage. Uh, most people we could have done a little more damage. more damage than that, probably. 